All right, so we pulled data into Gatsby via GraphQL. That's good, let's take it a step further. What I wanna do is I wanna pull data from a markdown file. So I'm gonna head over to the Google, and I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring a new Gatsby plugin. If we do a search for Gatsby markdown, we should find, well, maybe not, we used to find it, is the markdown remark. There it goes. Google, you're kinda of throwsing at me, kinda of fun there. Anyways, I'm looking for the Gatsby JS plugin of the Gatsby Transformer Remark. It's been downloaded 1.6 million times. No, that's not it. Let's go find it again. It's been downloaded a lot. So I want to bring in the Gatsby Transformer Remark. This is going to make all of my markdown files be readable from Gatsby. So I'm going to copy and paste this NPM. I'm going to drop it into my project. I'll stop for a second. And while this is going on, I'm gonna do two new things in my folder structure. I'm gonna create both a static and a content folder for my markdown files and my pictures. So what I'm gonna do is inside my 179 Gatsby CMS folder, I'm gonna say content. This is where all of my content is gonna live in terms of my markdown files. I'm then also gonna say static and in here, I'm gonna create an images folder. So what I'm gonna do is bring in a couple pictures inside this static folder. And if we go into static, I've got a different folder sitting off to the side. I'm gonna bring in three pictures. I'm gonna bring in, here it goes, my lasvegas.jpg, my limaperu.jpg, and my Venice folder, my Venice file. Now also these files are quite big, but I wanna show you how Gatsby resizes them on the fly. So I have these three pictures and images inside my static folder, and I wanna create some content in my content. Now, two more things I have to do inside of my config before this all works. I've installed it, but I have to bring in the plugin Gatsby Transformer Remark. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in, and what I'm gonna look for is my Gatsby config file, and there it is, I'm gonna come down, I actually put mine right after, or I should say right before the transformer sharp, just kind of where I put things. And I also have to now increase three different folders within the source file system. So I'm gonna copy and paste this, and I will say MD for markdown. I'm gonna say content right here. There's nothing in there yet, but there will be. And then I'll paste it one more time, drop it down, this is also my images folder for right now, and I'll say static. So now I have a static folder and a content folder and an images folder. Now I need to bring in something into this content, otherwise it will hiccup. So I'm gonna say new file. And in here I'm gonna type three dashes and three dashes, and I'm gonna say the word location, and this is going to be Las Vegas. As you can see here, I'm gonna have three locations for this project, a Las Vegas, a Lima, Peru, and a Venice. So what I'm gonna do is say location Las Vegas and also bring in this image as well. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the file name just so I don't mess it up right here. And after location Las Vegas, I am gonna say travel dates. So I wanna pick some travel dates for this project. I'm gonna create more of a tourist site and I will say August 10, 2024 to September 1, 2024. You're gonna spend a lot of time in Vegas. If you've ever been to Vegas, that's an awfully long time. I'm then gonna say featured image. And here I have to locate where this file is. So if I save this file, I'm gonna create a new folder. There to go, that's 179, I have to go to 178. Where'd it go, 179, there you are. Inside this content folder, I'm gonna say travel locations. So we'll say travel locations in this folder. And then I'm gonna say, instead of untitled one, I'm gonna call this one Las Vegas. Now if you think about the location of where those pictures are, they're outside of two folders. So if we head back down, and come back down here to the content, we've now created a new folder called Travel Locations and Las Vegas. So to go out of this folder twice, I have to type in 
a dot dot slash twice. So I'm going to say dot dot slash dot dot slash. Sort of a song it almost sounds like. Now that we're outside of that folder, I'm going to head down to static and images. So I will then say static and images. And now I'm going to then link up the lasvegas.jpg. I have some lore mips I'm going to bring in right here. So I'll we'll come on down here. Now in the world of markdown files, the top part of the markdown is called the front matter and the bottom part is HTML or just content. So I'm gonna pull data from these three pieces at the very top into my project. If we save this and if I restart Gatsby, let's go into Gatsby develop. Three things we added, we added two new file systems and we added the transformer remark inside of the Gatsby config. The other part we also had was a new file called lasvegas.md. Hopefully it's all working. And we head to the featured image up to that spot as well, where the new picture is sitting in the static folder. And just like magic, we should get is when I refresh my browser, we get a couple new files. We already have the desert file. Now we have lasvegas.md and lasvegas.jpg along with Lima, Peru and Venice with these really pretty big file sizes. Awesome, that's great. How do we pull this in? Well, we have to go back to GraphQL where everything either works or doesn't work. This is where I always start from where I wanna work with. So we have the edges, we've got our all file. Now, if I refresh this page, check out what happens. Oh, <laughs> the uh, folder structure went away too. Now all of a sudden we have the all markdown remark. Check that out. So we not just have the all file, but I wanna pull the all markdown remark in. If I click on this and hit this little play icon, oh, check it out. We have one something or other. I always love how it pulls the ID because really it doesn't tell you what it is, but that's just the way it goes. But we have one markdown file, so it shows one markdown file. If we head into front matter, we have four, it always has this title, which again, the title is going to do nothing, so ignore the word title. But if we head over to both travel dates and location, we should see that August 10th and location is pulling data. So it's pulling the data from these two spots. But here's where it really gets awesome. That featured image features Gatsby image or the Gatsby plugin image as it's now called. So that featured image has an arrow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down featured image and then go to child image sharp. I'm just gonna type in, if we go to Gatsby image data, if we hit this little play icon, oh, check it out. It made a lot of data. So it's gonna pull new information from that picture and make it in multiple various sizes. I'm just gonna set a width for right now and just say 600 for this project. And as long as I do not get any nulls, any error messages, it's all pulling great. Like this is awesome. I am stoked on this setup right here. So I now have all of my markdown remarks pulling through that I can then copy and paste into my project. I'm gonna then copy and paste. Again, I'm not gonna to touch the top curly bracket or the bottom curly bracket. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this into my GraphQL at the very bottom of my page. So inside of my index, I'll close the Gatsby config. If I come down here, again, I'm not gonna to touch that last curly bracket, that's the query. I'm gonna type in something new. I'm gonna say travel locations and then paste this in and it should line up, there it goes. And if I save this, no error messages, but then again, no content. So I have to build in another edges to work within this project. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head up to the top and up in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right below the UL. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna say in this case, data and then travel location dot edges, and then map this little sucker. So I'll parentheses this one guy, I'll do a second one, and I'll bring in the node. And after that, what I will do is equal sign, and then I'm gonna then say greater than symbol, and then I'm gonna add one more set of parentheses and drop it down. 
Now again, I like to do is I like to bring in that ID first to make sure everything's working. Let me just save it. And what happened here? Data, travel locations, something is not working here in this case. Air message, let's see what's catching in this case. That's strange. Whoa, we got a whole bunch of error messages. Oh, and I just bring in the wrong one down there again, a second time. Um, yep. Nope, we just have saved it. We didn't actually put any information in. So what I have to do is I have to make sure when I do a mapping, I'm gonna say div div in the word test. There we go. If I don't add an opening and closing brackets of HTML, I can always add just a, again, an open and close, and it's gonna add the word test. If I don't have that, it's gonna throw a big error message. I just jumped the gun by one second. So we see it kind of working. It says the word test, but we have to bring in information down below. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in node.id at the very top. So we'll then change the word test. We'll just try it here and say node.id and check it out. The information got pulled through. We know that that ID is connected to the Markdown Remark. One, because it shows up right here, but also there's only one of them as well. So the five AAD corresponds to the Markdown file. That's pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in not the IED any longer, but now the front matter, and then the travel dates and the location. Start with the location. So I'm gonna then say in this case, take that out. We'll say H2. And in here, I'll say node dot front matter. And front matter does not have an uppercase, making sure it does not, and the word location. So node dot front matter location. Check it out. We have our Las Vegas. Now the next thing I want to do is add a paragraph tag. And this one's going to be for the travel dates. So in here, I'm going to come back up to the top and say node dot front matter dot travel dates. I'm not do it right. I thought there was an underscore in there. And just like that, up pops the travel dates. Now we have to bring in this picture of some sort because we can't just drop in that information because feature image corresponds to child image sharp and the Gatsby image data. Thankfully, Gatsby already thought of this. So what I'm gonna do is the very top, here we go. I'm gonna uncomment out this information. Now I'm not gonna use static image. I'm gonna use two things. I'm gonna add get image, comma, and then Gatsby image as well. We have to pull the information from GraphQL, which we have to use something brand new. If I save that, yep, it's gonna give me an error message. And if I come down the page, I'm gonna add a new paragraph tag for right now. And in here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say Gatsby image, and I'll then drop it down a line, drop it down a line, and self-close the Gatsby image. So how Gatsby image works, it's gonna pull the data from GraphQL. We're gonna say image equals, and then say get image. And in the get image, I'm gonna add parentheses and say node dot front matter dot featured, not featured, featured image. And just like that, if we then do it quickly for a quick second, it's gonna say, whoa, hang on, we've got two left. Nope, successful, I take it back. Just like that, we have our picture, pretty rad. Now we do have to do two more things. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna say alt, we have to include this one. And this alt, I'm gonna use the same name as a location. So this picture is gonna to correspond to Las Vegas. Now we can't really see it here, so I'm gonna do an inspect area. And whoa, I have to move this down a little bit this way. If we look at our inspect, it will say inside this image that our picture is going to be of Las Vegas. So our alt will connect the two as well to this area. Move it right back up in this one. There it goes, right there. Now, why does it not go across the entire screen? That's because we have this 600 attached to it. 
So if we take out this 600, I'm going to take out this Gatsby image data. Up, oh, have to take out that, but then take out the width. See, this is the problem. I should probably not do that within GraphQL. So what I'm going to do is head back and take out the width right here. So I'll take it out. And now if I save it, it does work. So it's just Gatsby image data. Again, I'm always making sure in case I mess it up, I go right back to the source where I can then just drop it in. Not to worry about any error messages going forward. And now it all works totally fine. Now, if I just had the Gatsby image data, it would pull this giant picture into my design and it would be constrained right here as well. So do know that it will be constrained based upon the parent size, which is pretty cool. Welcome to fabulous Las Vegas. Now in this design, in this case, I said 600 because I always like to bring in the size that I needed to be. So I'll rebring back the 600 size and it then resizes down to the right size that it has to be in the constrained approach. And that's how I can pull data from my markdown file into my project. 